I'm going to talk about Silent University, which is an adventure since 2012. Well, maybe it started thinking about it 2011. Um, and in the beginning, it was I was an artist. I was invited to a um, residency in London, uh, which was an invitation by Tate and Delfina Foundation, and there was a duration. So uh, this whole thing was supposed to end uh, December 2012. And now here we are, uh, three years past. I'm, I'm happy that I can still talk about this happening and even beyond UK, also here in Sweden. Uh, so the, the, it was an art project and it was shifted from art project to an organization. So I was very much aware in the beginning of the requirements of the project. Um, and I tried to apply these principles. They were mostly practical principles how to establish an organization. And, well, at the very first place why we needed such an organization called Silent University. So today I'm going to try to explain not the practical through not the true practical um, principles, but ideological uh, principles, um, and some of them. And here you see these are not a random group of people. Uh, these are uh, lecturers of Silent University uh, now living in um, London, Stockholm, and Hamburg. Um, well, uh, there is one thing in common uh, between them, they, although they come from all kinds of places all around the world. And um, yeah, Abdullah is here, Fahima is here, Nori and Sherko is here. They are in Stockholm now, and the others are in London, like Muligeta, Dr. Nazar, uh, and others in Hamburg. Um, What's the common thing between them that the main logic and main reason and the urgency and the need behind uh, this organization? If I use the word project or workshop during the talk, you enter the music, <laughs> you try to stop me. Um, <laughs> so that's one of our condition and principle. So I go, go through the demands and um, we have little time, but you can see this was the background of each individual. Now you can see they're all silent university uh, academicians and lecturers. Uh, their uh, backgrounds used to be. They are all asylum seekers, refugees, and migrants. Uh, now in UK, Sweden, and Germany, um, at the moment where the, pro, uh, when the organization is happening. And, um, and you can see the background. So Mr. Behnam is a calligrapher. Dr. Nazar is a doctor. Um, Sharko is an, a journalist in exile, writer, photographer, and so on. Um, and the, the organization basically focusing on the, each individual's needs. And uh, sometimes you need to hide their identity, names. As you see here, there's, uh, there are reasons. But this is not, uh, like most of them, they wait especially in the UK, up to 20 years, 8 years, 10 years, 15 years for their legal papers. So uh, you can see an image of uh, our uh, very first event in 2012 at date. Um, BN, at that time, she was uh, protected uh, by involving in this organization. We were not showing her face according to her wishes and legal situation at that time. And this year, we organized events in uh, London, in showroom, and now we can show her face, and her name is Bridget Nongo, she's from Republic of Congo, and here you can see she's representing her lecture in Lingala language. Um, I say Lingala language, so we don't also, so like activating knowledge without legal limitation, we are also demanding activating knowledge without language limitation. So here you can see Mr. Behnam and Nuri Fakhri uh, presenting their courses in uh, their native languages in Arabic and in Kurdish. And you can see as examples of lectures and topics, they also choose their topics according to their background. So over this waiting time, they are, off, they are, they are unable to practice their background and we don't wait for uh, this time gap. We immediately activate their knowledge in the language they prefer. So that makes it very diff difficult for the users how to access that knowledge. I will tell more about that um, later. 
uh, if you get more time. Um, you can see, as any other university, we tried to do, we created a library uh, collecting all the different kind of models of learning, um, uh, alternative currencies, and all these issues. Um, we made uh, research about what are the modalities that has been used because we are aiming to become this autonomous modality that can be applied wherever there is the urgency. So urgency is the keyword. And uh, right now, um, there are some institutions. Uh, we still collaborate since the very beginning, and some institutions are changing over the years. Uh, currently, we have a very fresh branch in Hamburg uh, in collaboration with Stad Gretoring and uh, Werkstatt, and in Stockholm, Tensta Konshal and uh, ABF, uh, which is not so far from here, Workers' Union Association um, for Education. And uh, London, uh, the first branch of Silent University. Um, this year we collaborated with Oxford University's Refugee Studies Center, uh, the showroom, and Delphina Foundation since, involved since the beginning, actually, Delphina Foundation. So it requires that kind of long-term engagement. When I was in a residency that had a deadline, this idea didn't fit that format. Basically, this idea didn't fit the formats we have in the art world. And uh, that was one art world struggle, beside all the other struggles we have, like these legal limitations that not having documents and um, how to activate that immediately with or limited resources or in a constant fundraising uh, struggle or uh, try to get recognition, as Sasuke Sassen said yesterday. Um, unauthorized, but recognized. So how can we be immediately recognized without waiting for bureaucracy, administration, and bureaucracy is everywhere, and also in art institutions as well. So the idea was a combination of three types of institutions, art institutions, education institutions, and NGOs, community organizations. Each one of them have different kind of uh, access facilities, potentials, and um, we operate in between them as a parasitic organization. And we also don't want to marginalize ourselves uh, to immediately turn into an association uh, in a small scale, but we rather prefer uh, to transform the institutions we collaborate. To transform and go beyond the modalities, models, or the formats they have, um, and how we can be more flexible and inventive when it comes to difficulties and struggles. So this is a project of struggle, and uh, we face with difficulties, but we start with a problem, as Paulo Ferriere says. Um, we also, um, on the way, we had uh, events and other kind of activities, try to go, um, try to push forward, forward the modality. So we never go, st we never step back. We, every event we organize, we try to get a result or outcome out of it. Uh, this is also, uh, one event, uh, Jonas was one of the organizers. We, uh, we were in uh, Amsterdam City Council, uh, meeting with politicians and directors of art institutions and uh, schools, uh, students, and discussing all this. Well, I was thinking I was too fast. But, um, anyway, uh, we act in solidarity with other refugee str struggles and learn from each other how to get organized. And very important, the uh, goal behind all this organization is actually beyond the organization itself, beyond me, and it's all of our concerns when we think about uh, pedagogy and education that is decentralized, participatory, horizontal, and autonomous modality of education instead of compulsory, oppressive, uh, authoritarian, and, uh, and monolingual education. If I have time, this must by not really end. Uh, I can show you a little bit, if you still have time, yeah? I can show you a little bit about how you can become users. This is not a project only for migrants and asylum seekers. This is a project for uh, all of us to get involved. And involving is um, an act, it's an uh, act of uh, solidarity and it's, it's an active type of involvement. Um, so any of you can go. Um, 
online, become a member of Silent University, and if it is happening in your hometown, uh, you can come and we can welcome you to our events. As soon as you are a member, you have right to access all the knowledge being produced in any language by any of our lectures, uh, wherever Silent University is happening. Done. <laughs> okay, yeah. I have a question for you too, because I'm, it's very interesting. And I would like to know if you got some, uh, if politician showed some interest for this. Well, uh, in Amsterdam, we had that debate. Um, uh, it didn't go much further, but this is very slow. Like, mm. we have no deadlines for anything. That doesn't mean the situation is not, like, urgent. It's no. super urgent, and it, it, yeah. it's, it has yeah. to be done now, right now. Yeah. But we are not in panic also. <laughs> so, politicians, uh, there was politicians who were interested, especially we were uh, presenting there with a group that they were, since two years, active. Um, started as like around 200 uh, asylum seekers uh, occupying different buildings mm -hmm. in the city and negotiating, constantly negotiating with the government and the mayor of the city. So it was a moment that we, get, we got closest, maybe. But uh, I think it will take two or three more years to get to that level, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I do my best, but I think also it's important to have a really uh, strong info structure has mm -hmm. been built underneath. Uh, so it will not disappear like this. Okay, thank you yeah, very much. You're